Terry, first off, congratulations on a 3-0 weekend down in Fullerton. What was key for you guys in, uh, in going 3-0? Well, first, thanks. Uh, going 3-0, we, we just took care of business uh, with each individual team. And, and the way we handicapped the tournament, we felt that San Diego State was the best team and Santa Clara second, Fullerton third. And then all of a sudden, Santa Clara beats San Diego State in the first match of the tourney. Uh, they were all pretty tough and to begin with, but you know, we persevered because I felt we were the better serving passing team of all those teams. And then I, I felt that certainly some of our players really had outstanding performances. One of those players, Erica Nassar, Offensive Player of the Week in the Pac-12, what can you say about what she's done for this team this season? Well, you know, she's really come to play almost every match that we've been in, and, and both on the hitting end and blocking end. And I'm liking the way she rises to the occasion when we play the really good teams. Uh, you know, the excitement you see in her eyes of uh, blocking the Penn State players or blocking some of the best players on the other side and then conversely attacking. You know, she's expanded her zone of attack before she used to hit in front of the setter only. Now she hits in back of the setter and that's really helped her range and helped spread out the block. You mentioned this team played some good teams last weekend, but now you jump in and play Oregon and UCLA. About the two, uh, probably the toughest opening weekend for any Pac-12 school. What, uh, what's going to be key this weekend? Well, you know, we'd love to get a split. There you look at two road games, you'd love to split on the road and win at home. Uh, you know, realistically, I think each one of them poses different types of uh, um, just difficulties. One, the Ducks are very good at home. The Ducks are a great attacking team. Uh, they have a great setter in, in Plum. And we just have to take the Ducks out of system. You've got to really serve the ball tough and then you really need to block them and play defense against them so that you can't have them have the first ball side out. If they terminate on that first ball, it's going to be a, a very short night. But you got to just go after them. Both matchers are on the road in you know, uh, hostile environments, but you know, fortunately this team has played Kansas State at Kansas State and uh, Penn State in a neutral site. How are those matches going to help you guys on this weekend? Well, both those matches were played in front of big crowds. Uh, they were loud gyms, and I think that that helps us. Uh, we know that in preparation for both Oregon and UCLA, we've played hey, Penn State's as good as anybody in the Pac-12. So we just need to realize that, hey, you got to play one point at a time, forget the opponent on the other side of the net, drop the curtain, the ball's on our side, we have to execute. And I, I really feel that this team is confident. This, this has been a great preseason for us. It's been a long travel. What is it, 14,000 miles? Um, but I, I, I really believe that it made us ready for the Pac-12. You mentioned those 14,000 miles. Now you get to stay in the state of Oregon. How nice is that to sleep in your own beds and, and take a bus to the match instead of having to fly? Well, I think it's great. You know, uh, we, we look forward to that. I think the team's looking forward to uh, sleep in tomorrow morning with no morning practice. And we'll just leave in the afternoon, have a servant pass uh, at the Matt Knight Arena and then go after those ducks. One of the nice aspects about getting into Pac-12 play is not only are you playing your fellow schools, but you're also playing on the Pac-12 network. So it's going to be the debut for Oregon State Volleyball. You've mentioned it and that it's a really big deal in the past, but now that you get this close to it, you know, tell me a little bit about what it means to play on a, on a TV so much. Well, I think it's exciting. It's exciting for the sport of volleyball. Um, certainly anybody that follows volleyball knows it's an action-packed, great sport to watch. And I've always said you come once, you come, you'll come back. And with the network, now we have a chance to showcase 82 games live. And that's you know, unbelievable. If you look back and say that we only had 11 uh, entire Pac-12 matches last year on tape delay, and now we'll have 82 live, that's spectacular. And for us, we're going to be on twice this week, uh, once regionally, once nationally. I think we're looking forward to it. I, I think the, the, the country will see how good the Pac-12 is. What do you tell these players about playing on TV? You know, they haven't been on so much uh, since they came to Oregon State, but now they, you know, an explosion of TV contests. What do you tell them about playing on TV? Or do you tell them anything at all? Yeah, you know, we haven't talked much about it. I think they need to just get used to it. I, I know last year, because you're only on once, it becomes such a big thing that it, it's way over, 
emphasized to them. And I think that they're just going to get used to it. There's going to be some differences with the 90 second timeouts, uh, with uh, automatic timeouts at 15 and 8 in the fifth set. And all those are things that you're going to really get used to. And I, I think it's, uh, we'll just mention it. They'll know the cameras will be there and we'll go from there. You mentioned Oregon's got a great offense. You look at the stats, though, Oregon State's got a great defense. What has been key this season for this team? Well, I think one, our blocking. We, we block well. The other is that our backcourt, particularly anchored by Becky Defoe and then Marty Massey, Alyssa O'Neill, Darby Reeder, Kathleen Basso, all the people that have played back row have done a great job for us. And we're, we scramble for every play. We don't let the other opponents score easily. We want to make sure that the little things matter. And, and I think we learned some hard lessons at Kansas State because, hey, those little things in that match really mattered. We should have beaten Kansas State. And, and I think that Kansas State now, hey, they're undefeated. They're 12-0. and 0. They're 11th in the country. They just wound up beating a very good Minnesota team and a, a very good Dayton team. So we know that we're right in that hunt, and we just got to take care of those little things. Okay, and Terry, one last question. Uh, this team is on an eight-match winning streak. It's about the second longest in school history. Does it show the progress this team has made over the last couple of years, and, and what does that mean to you? Well, you know, we knew coming in it's going to be a daunting task to build a volleyball program. We just had no idea how hard it is based on early recruiting where kids commit early and then they have to make unofficial visits. It's been a long road for us, but we've never deviated from it, and I think – because both Mark Barnard and I have been to the top of the mountain and having been Olympic coaches, we know how long it takes to be good. And, uh, you know, I've said this a long time ago is that uh, I don't want to build a te good team. I want to build a great program. And, and once we're there, we're going to just keep building on it. And so that is a meaningful winning streak. But, uh, hey, um, I think we just got to keep our nose to the grindstone, know that it's a long 20-match Pac-12 season. All these teams are good. We got to take care of business at home, and we certainly have to take care of the teams that are right there on par with us, the Arizona, Arizona State, Washington State, Utah, and Colorado. And, and now I think Cal is right in there. And then we need to just upset some of those other teams, which we're, we look forward to doing. All right, Terry, thanks for your time, and good luck this week. Thank you.